Hello, my YouTube family. Well, I'm home. It is Thursday, and I only got one package. Nothing to do with cosmetics, people. Nothing to do with cosmetics. But let me do lips of the day first, get that out the way. Um, some color today, even though it's brown. This is a great brown, though. This one's tricky because this one is a creamy, creamy, but I kind of like this one. I had to put a touch of gloss on top and I lined it, but it worked for me today. This creamy, creamy actually works today. And what is it? It is an NYX people. I think I have two more to show you and I have done my NYX. It took me a year, but I finally got to it. This one is number 558 Cocoa. And this is Cocoa, which I love. It's a creamy, creamy. It is a creamy, creamy. Creamy, creamy. Cocoa. But this one didn't bother me, especially when I put my beautiful MAC lip glass on top, as you can see. Um, yeah, I've been using this a lot for many, many, many years. Many, many years. So, yeah. So, this was on top of this. Made it a little bit more shiny. And I just had to, because you know this. Oh, we are talking super sticky, super glossy, super shiny. I'm talking serious on the street corner hookup. So, to just get this little bit of shine, all I did was just take my lip brush. As soon as it got to the tip, it got to the tip up here, bam. Just spread it around and call it a day. And that is it. That's the shine. And seeing that this is so sticky, it lasted. This, on its own, child. I'm sure this is what hookers use. I'm almost, I'm almost certain of it. I'm just saying. Lined my lips with my Club Monaco, discontinued, sorry, um, in mahogany. Club Monaco, mahogany. This is what mahogany looked like. There you go. So this is Coco NYX, people. I'm almost there. At least it's a little bit of color today, right? Just a little bit. Tonight, to, tonight. Tomorrow might be a little brighter. Because it is going to be a half a day work day, picnic day tomorrow. And tomorrow is my birthday. Can I get a holla? Can I get an amen? I made it to another year, people. Let's knock on wood for that one. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting older, but I'm still getting there. So this is a good thing. So um, lips of the day is done. And let me show you what I got. Two DVDs. One is Stand and Deliver. Love this movie, based on a true story. Love this movie. And yes, that, my friends, is, um, what's his name again? Hold on. Blue Diamond Phillips. Looking all tough. You could beat your ass, too. And in the back is a very young, very hot Andy Garcia. Mm, 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 mm. Here he go right there. So, this is a lovely movie to enjoy. And the other one is also a lovely movie to enjoy. A classic. It is a classic. And I have the first one, and this is the second one. Rocky II, baby. Y'all can laugh at me all you want. I like the Rocky movies. Okay? The only one that disappointed me greatly was not the very, very last one, but Rocky V. Not Rocky, Rocky Balboa. Rocky Balboa was the one after Rocky V, because Rocky V was a pitiful waste of celluloid. But I guess they had to make up for it by, by, by making Rocky Balboa, which actually wasn't really that bad. So I may get, I already have, okay, this is Rocky two. I need three, four, I'm going to skip five, pretend it never happened, and then just get Rocky uh, Balboa, which is the end of the series, I hope. I hope Sylvester Stallone don't make another one. He ain't got no kind of sense making another Rocky movie. So this is Rocky 2. Yes, honey. This is Rocky 2. 
Is this the one with Club Elaine? Let me check. I forget. Uh, no, this is this is the this is the rematch. This is the rematch between Apollo Creed and Rocky. Yes. Yes. And my mother used to love she's the one that she's the first one that went to go see the Rocky movies. And then she dragged me along with them, and then I ended up loving them. She loved the Rocky movies because of the soundtrack. And there's a story behind the whole soundtrack thing. Um the music is by Bill Conti. He is obviously a musician, and he is also a um, orchestra leader, I guess you could say. Anyway, his music background is the classics, like Bach, Chopin, um, Beethoven, you know, all of those. Mainly Bach, though. He's a, he's a big Bach fan. And he's a big Bach fan so much so that there's touches of Bach sounds in the Rocky soundtrack. So if, you, if you're if good with classical music, you'll hear the notes. You'll hear, the, you'll hear the, 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 the classical music notes. And I got so enthralled with it after, you know, mom saw it. And then she said, you've got to see this movie just for the soundtrack. I know nothing about it. Well, at the time, I know a lot, a little bit more about music now. But at the time, I mean, when the, these movies came out, I was like, you know, 10, 11. So she dragged me to the movies, and she really loved these movies. And after she saw the first one, she saw the first one by herself, I think. Mom and Pop never were much for date night. But she went to go see it by herself. And um, she came back, and she, I mean, she was lit up. So she said, this is a really great movie. You've got to go see this movie. This movie's fantastic. Oh, you've got to go see this movie. So I'm like, yeah, okay. So she just kept saying, the soundtrack is fantastic. The soundtrack is fantastic. I love the music. In the, in. So I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I actually got her the Rocky, I got her Rocky 1 and Rocky 2 soundtrack. I think I basically got her Rocky 2. Because Rocky II was pumped up a little bit more. So um, I got her the soundtrack, the, the album at the time. It was a big vinyl album, people. I know some of y'all don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. But it was a big vinyl album. And uh, she was really thrilled about that. She used to play it all the time. And then I used to play it. And I used to listen to it. And then I would hear what she was talking about. And I'm like, oh, okay, the little... The little orchestration in the background, okay, that's the little box sounding, okay. So now, you know, she's since gone, and I've become my mother. They always say you do eventually become your mom. Um, and now, when I watch the Rocky movies, I do get a little teary. I'm getting a little choked up right now just talking about it. Because I listen to the music, and I remember... So, I guess you could say this is an homage to mom, but I really love these movies. I wound up loving them myself. Not because she loved them, but I wound up loving them myself. So, I think after Rocky 2, after she dragged me to Rocky 1, I think I was like, I got excited and I said, oh, I can't wait until Rocky 2. And then from then on, we saw them together. So, um, I've got Rocky 1 now. And this is my Rocky 2. So that's my little story for you, my little ditty. That's basically it in a nutshell, people. Nothing else came, nothing exciting, no other packages, just just those two videos. And I, I'm, you know, my DVD collection is growing immensely. There were two other videos, DVDs. I keep calling them videos. Two other DVDs that came last week, but this was prior to my birthday hauls, and it was Face Off and Toy Story. Toy Story, the Toy Story DVD that I got was the 10th anniversary Toy Story. So it's two discs. One is the actual movie, and the other one is the behind the scenes and how Pixar got started and, you know, the up and downs of how Toy Story got made. I love behind the scenes stuff, people. Love behind the scenes stuff. If there's a DVD of a movie out, I will always try to see if they have behind the scenes stuff. Like, let me see. 
does Rocky II have... Mm, don't look like it has any behind-the-scenes stuff. The stands in the Louvre? No. But that's okay. That is okay. Rocky, the first Rocky I have is a two-disc set, I think. And it's got behind-the-scenes stuff of how Rocky got made and who Sylvester Stallone was at the time. And I love behind-the-scenes stuff. I love knowing how a movie became, you know, what, what the writer or the creator of that movie, what he had to go through, the torment. If you want to see a tormented person who is now infamous, famous and infamous, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, y'all need to check out the story of how The Godfather was created. I don't know if, if some of y'all Everybody knows The Godfather. Even the youngins know The Godfather. Come on. Of course, you all know um, Scarface a little bit more. I don't know if that's a... I don't know if that's a Coppola movie. Um, uh, what's his name? Mario Coppola? I forgot. I know it's... No, that's George Lucas. George Lucas is Star Wars. Francis Ford Coppola. I just said the man's name. Francis Ford Coppola. He is the one that took the book that Mario Puzo wrote. Mario Puzo is the author of the book, The Godfather. Francis Ford Coppola got the rights to the book to make the movie. And therein lies the torment and the torture of what this man had to go through in order to make the movie. First of all, he auditioned, and they have all of this in the set, the Godfather set, one, two, three. I think there's three Godfathers, right? Three? I have all three. But if you buy the set, there are DVDs within that set of behind-the-scenes stuff of how Godfather 1 got made, Godfather 2 got made, Godfather 3 got made. Good stuff, people. Good stuff. And I'll just tell you a little bit about Godfather 1. If you know the movie, I mean, I know the movie like the back of my hand. It's one of my father's absolute, as a matter of fact, I got him at the time, it was VHS. I got him the VHS back in the day. It was a Christmas. I think it was for Christmas. I got him that for Christmas. That was one of his best and favorite gifts, even up until today, I think. The Godfather, when they were doing the casting for it, now everybody knows that Al Pacino was Michael. They were doing the auditions. Now, everybody knows that James Caan is Sonny. They wanted James Caan to audition for Michael. Now, James Caan even said to himself, when he went in for the audition for Michael, he's like, I am not Michael. I don't know why I'm auditioning for Michael. I'm telling you right now, I'm Sonny. I don't know why you're wasting your time. I am not going to be Michael. There's no way I can be Michael. But they made him get dressed in the Michael costume. They made him run the Michael lines. And you just see right off the bat, it's like, what the hell were they thinking? Did they really think that James Caan was going to be Michael? Oh, hell no. So then they got an up-and-comer who was not well-known at the time, a little man by the name of Al Pacino. Who the hell knew Al Pacino? He had done a couple of plays. And he was like, eh. Okay, fine. Let's get this 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 unknown Al Pacino. Well, we all know what happened after that, right? Now you just say Al Pacino, and you know, you automatically know. So um, that's my little ditty for today. Okay, so there you have it, people. That's the story of the day. Um, I love you. I love my YouTube family. Let me know what you think. I love this shade. I do. I do. I do. It's a creamy, creamy but one that I can actually live with. Go figure. And on that note, people, I love you. Tomorrow, I don't know when I'll see you. I don't know when I'll see you because I'll be at the picnic. And I, I'll probably see you before I, before the time is now. I'll probably be coming home. I'll sneak out. I'll eat a couple of burgers and stuff and hot dogs or whatever, whatever they got over there. I'll play a couple of games, and then I'll sneak my way out and call it a day. And then I'll come home a little earlier, and then I can probably make lips of the day. So there you have it. So we'll see what happens, okay? 
Um, I love you. I love my YouTube family. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you. As you comment, I will comment back. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Okay, my lovelies? I love you all. Bye now.